Yeah, we have. Yeah, um, it was always a challenge. This week was was really flicking ourselves or, or, or getting the focus on West Coast, um, and we've done that really well. We'll find out whether we've done that well, but we um, yeah we made sure we moved on quickly as a footy department, put our focus straight away on on the challenge this week, and um, you know a challenge that we've we've experienced already. We've been through something similar. Um, you know, last year where we come up against West Coast and, and what, a, what a cauldron it was that we played in. So we know that's coming again, as it should do, because they've got some, some really, um, really important players finishing up at their footy club and, and they deserve to have a great send-off. So we're going to be a part of that. Hopefully we're able to do the job again and, and finish up on top. How did you do that? Did you, say you made sure players were adjusted and ready to go? Um, well, I gave them a minute to vent and get out any anger they had and we put a countdown timer on it and we said that'll do um, and we moved on and we moved on because it, um, it's one of those things you know you, you have a lot of disappointments during the year when you come off losses sometimes it's you know losses where you perform really badly uh, and we want to focus on you know getting back to that positivity and, and move into the next week because a week's such a long time in footy um, Sometimes it's, it's that we you know, didn't quite get the job done, but you know, we just want to move on. And that's really what happened this week. We didn't get the job done, and in the end, we're disappointed in that. And so we, we now go, well, let's finish our season strong. It's been one of those years where um, you know, we'd say our ladder position probably doesn't represent uh, you know, what we put out there this year, but it is what it is, and we need to be better. Uh, and so we're doing everything we can to, to get better. Even this week was, you know, we're in the detail. This game now becomes really important for what we move and, and do into 2024. How's that like everyone just screams whatever they want for a minute? How does that? Whatever gets it off your chest, yeah. Like, did you have 44 blokes in the room and they all just yelled out for 60 seconds? No, oh, they had a chat to the guy next to them for, and we'll just talk through it and just, just, just move on. Get out whatever you want to get out and, and move on. And staff, you know, it's important too as a, as a footy club that um, we got a job to do this week. And so we've got to focus on that. We trained really well today. Um, we've got a group that are, that are really hungry. Um, we'll have a couple that won't play. You know, so Shane won't play this week, obviously. Um, Sloaney won't play. We just, we just will not take a risk around and that, especially with, with the history that Sloaney's had around the eyes. Um, so that gives an opportunity to a couple of other players who are going to come in really hungry. And that's what we're going to have to be this week. No, there's moments we don't need to review. There's moments we need to be better in. Well, you know, a lot of that was through the first half. And we always balance what our review is of stuff that we need to improve on, um, which that doesn't take long normally. It's, um, you know, small areas. And then we'll, we'll focus on a lot of the positive on what we're able to do when we're at our best. And part of that, that is just remaining positive, knowing that we can play some great footy. Um, but also knowing the difference between when it's not quite at the level, what, what can happen. And our opposition on the weekend were fantastic in the first two quarters, two and a half quarters. They, you know, you don't, you don't come up against many teams that bring that sort of pressure. And I thought they were outstanding. And so uh, this weekend we want to be in that position where you know we're challenging our oppo, and, and we're not needing to come back like we did in the second half this week. We had, we had, oh, sorry. How do you reflect on the end? <coughs> Well, we've, we've moved on. The focus has changed. So, as I said, we probably spent a minute on it. Well, and even that's not that's that's not genuine discussion. That's that's a, the minute is a statement to move on. We do that week in week out, guys. It's not. If you dwell on the past, well, then you you're not going to move forward. So, our focus is, has been pretty clearly on the, on what the challenge is this week, which is West Coast, who have found form. You know, they've had a really tough year. Injury. Um, they've gone through you know, some really hard times. They're back playing some of their best footy. They're taking the game on. Um, you know, they looked like a different side last week, the way they moved the footy. They were, they were really taking the game on. So, so we've got our challenges this week. Some of the players that come out and come up with ideas as to how the, the goal umpire technology should be resolved is that something that you're doing? <laughs> so in a couple of weeks ago, I, I talked through that. Um, that'll be something I'll look at at the end of the year. That'll be something once we've finished 
our work off this season. Um, that I'll sit down, no doubt, with the AFL and we'll talk through what that needs to look like or what we think is best going forward. But it's the last thing I'm think, thinking about right now. You understand what you're saying about moving forward, and, uh, but that's two games now where the AFL's apologised post game, two narrow losses. You, you guys aren't going. You're not going to go off at A. I'll just. No, I, mean, I know millions. <laughs> in it, in it, but there's those. That's that, that's it would have been nice to, to get those going our way, but things don't always go your way. Like what, what, what are we going to do? We, we dwell on it. We're not going anywhere. So we move on really quickly. I think that maybe that's something you learn over your time in the game, that um, there's no point living in the past. Get over it, move on. We've got to be better. Like we, I'd love for us not to leave it to the last minute of a game to leave it in the hands of, of someone else, of, of where it is we, you know, we end up. I'd love for us to have had that done in the, you know, even four weeks earlier. Um, that's easier said than done, and we'll just keep getting better. And you know, hopefully next year we don't. There's no opportunity for this to happen. The game's well and truly done, or we're in finals. Because even now, let, let, let's be honest, we've we could win again this weekend and still not make finals. So it's not like finals was a guarantee. We we still had a hell of a lot of work to do, and we still do. Neil Craig used to say, sorry, Neil Craig used to say that games under ten points are lucky. They're in the uh, they're in the ice baths. <laughs> <laughs> that like <laughs> they're ready to go. They're ready to go. Yeah, a lot of that comes back to experiencing those moments. Um, I, I agree there is a certain amount of luck, but you make your own luck. There's no doubt. And, and we train a lot of those scenarios. Um, we will get better and better at them um, as we get more and more mature and go through that experience more often. You, you, f you find the teams that have got more games under their belt, that have been through it and experienced being on the wrong side of it, often find a way. They know what not to do in those moments because um, there's a key contest here or there. There's you know key moments where... And it may not have been we needed a goal at a certain point. We needed to, to go down a different path. And, and we'll continue to learn that. This year's been one where, you know, looking back on those moments, it hasn't necessarily been the moment that's cost us. It's been, you know, a quarter or a half a footy that leading into that where we haven't put four together. So we've been able to go back and say, well, we've got to be better in this space, not necessarily in the scenario. We do so many scenario training. We're confident on the weekend our scenarios were ready to go. Um, we'll keep working on those, but we also we're working on a bigger picture, more so of, of four quarters of footy and then week in week out, home and away. Um, which this year we you know we felt like we made some huge ground. Some you know our development in a lot of areas was so strong. The, you go back and look at a lot of the data from this year compared to where we were last year. The growth's been huge. We got to do that again next year. Moving on from the point of goal, um, debutant this week, yes or no? Uh, at this point, we've still got a little bit in the air. Probably not at this point. Um, I'd say if you're thinking about you know, possible wins, Lockie Glantz, I mean, more than likely going to play this week because he just deserves to come in. His form's been so strong at SNFL level. Um, with the, you know, Shane going out, Lockie's an obvious you know, a player who's had his hand up now for a period of time. Um, the other position will then be determined on what we decide to do around the footy and at half-back. So we haven't made that decision yet, but probably not a debutant. Are we any closer to knowing about Tom Duda's fate at the moment? There's talk that the club has given him an offer, they won't give him an offer. Well, we don't really talk about contract negotiation, but it's been a, an ongoing conversation. Uh, I've been able to talk with Tom right throughout you know, the last two or three months. Um, and that's been very open and honest about where things are at, how he's going. I'm always checking in on and making sure he's OK. He's, he's a very important part of what we've done at this footy club and what we'd like to do going forward. So we'll just keep working through that with Tom. And um, I've got no doubt at, at a stage, you know, hopefully, you know, we're able to move forward and he's a big part of what we're doing. Are you still confident? 
Well, I hope so. I mean, Tom and I, are, it, uh, just because we're great mates and we're close and we have a, a huge amount of respect for each other, doesn't mean that you necessarily keep players. There's other reasons, but again, there's there's details that we've got to we've got to get right in that space. Was your club surprised that Tom Uh, look, not something I'm particularly keen to talk through, to be honest. Um, not because I have a, a strong opinion on it at all, it's just something I haven't really looked at in enough detail to actually say oh, I'm not happy or I am happy. It's one of those ones where we're on the West Coast, I'm looking at West Coast, and decisions are made, the tribunal make the decisions, we don't. Yeah, again, not not a, not something I want to talk through because I don't know the details well enough. It's not something I've gone back and looked at like a tribunal has and understand all the detail. Um, Matt Crouch's future again, I suppose, like, finals, like the cards, unfortunately, the attention turns to who will be here next year. Yeah. Similar to Tom, I understand you can't talk to the details of that, but do you get the feel that <coughs> Matt's hungry to stay given what he's been able to do in the last month or so? Yeah, I, I mean, there's always a feel and we talk. We, we talk constantly. Um, I'd like to. I'd like to think Matt wants to stay at the club. I think. I'd like to think we've, we're building an environment and that he feels an important part of that. Um, that's been tough for him this year. You know, for him to actually feel that way, not getting an opportunity early in the season. But but since he has, I, I, probably more than that, the way he's, he's held himself, what he's done with our young group, the way he's played at SNFL level, we can't ask for more. He's then come in and performed, and it's been you know an outstanding month and just over of footy. Um, so we will now sit down. That will be a real focus for us over the next couple of weeks is working through that with Matty and his management and the footy club. Um, but no, I've been really pleased for Matty on, on how he's gone about it this year um, and, and hopeful of, of some positive outcomes. So Is there a balls in Tom's court in terms of Tom has to make a decision about his future? Is it the reverse for Matt? Is it almost you need to decide? If Matt wants to stay, do you need to decide whether you want Matt to be well, No, no. I mean, there's two sides to, to all of it. Um, so you know, off, off the bat... Yeah, there's, it's a conversation around, you know, there's, does Matty want to be at the footy club? Um, as I said, I, I really hope he does. Um, do, do we want him at the footy club? And, yeah, I, as a coach, you'd like to think Matty stays, but there's a lot more to list management than just... You know, I, I would have 70 players on our list if I could. Um, we can't do that. And there's a salary cap, and there's different, you know, reasons that some of these decisions they're not as straightforward as everyone thinks. So just keep him, or take that player and go and acquire this player. It doesn't work that way. Was there a bit of tension when he came back into the team and, and performed so well in terms of how he was with you? There was a bit of that maybe he sort of felt a bit vindicated, and there was a bit of frustration there that he had been playing. But not that I know of. So your relationship is good. You know? Yeah, we, yeah, we've got a great relationship. I, I like to think I've got a strong relationship with all of our players. Those relationships are always tested when it comes to you know contract negotiation and who's at the club and who's not. And there's always a turnover at the end of every year, so it becomes a, a tough time. But I'd like to think that you know, even players that have left our footy club, um, there's still a high level of respect there, definitely from my side towards those guys. And I do what I can to remain you know, in contact with, with a number of them be it fleetingly after a game if we're able to go over and, and let them know how well they're going if they're at a different club or, or how, how well they're going off the field. Do you expect the nature of some of these close losses in the have to seriously spur the guys on over summer? You heard the ice baths. We're, um, yeah, we don't lack any enthusiasm. I, I, I know the guys are really disappointed that mathematically we can't get there, but there's no lack of enthusiasm for where we're going. So, you know, we're, we're tracking well, we're developing quickly. The, the close losses, as you mentioned, they frustrate you more than anything and it makes you hungrier. And I think we, at the moment, we're super hungry. Um, massive, massive challenge this week for us to finish a season off that's been a, um, you know, one of development, but also one of, of disappointment that we haven't quite finished where we'd wanted to. Can you look at the past couple of 
basically they lost a lot of close games. The yeah. difference this year has been that they've won that and they're the top four tenders. Does that show how fine those margins are and what's possible? I think anyone who who knows and understands football knows how tight this season's been and how many teams are unlucky not to be in the playoff or in the finals mix. Um, we're one of those sides, and I'm happy to come out and say that if we had a crack, if we, if, if we got the opportunity in there, we'd have been licking our lips because we feel confident about the way we're playing, and that's even batting deep into our list at the moment. Um, the competition is so even, you know, so we're... We're confident we, if we continue to work hard uh, and we continue to progress and develop um, that we'll, we'll have a good season next year. But we understand that it's not linear. We're not, it's not necessarily going to be one. You look at some of the other young teams coming through, you, you can have some setbacks. And, you know, there's injuries to teams. It's happening right now. Look at some of the teams that have injuries and their form's not quite where it was. So um, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. Is it going to be more difficult watching finals this year knowing how close you were? It's always difficult watching finals.